This is my partner, Emmy Truckenmiller, and we are here for our Tucson Meet Yourself presentation performance for you. Um, everything is being done remote, so welcome to our studio here. And uh, thanks to everybody who's making this possible. So we're going to sort of mix things up, go in and out. Emmy's going to kind of take a little break here while I start a solo part of the show, and then she's going to come back and join us for some more music in just a little bit, so stay tuned. I've been playing music for a lot of my life and um, started out years ago playing piano and then violin, which soon became fiddle, but somehow I've always been enamored with the banjo and the banjo music. And that first piece that Emmy and I did together, Darling Corey, was a tune I first heard years ago from my parents singing and from the Weavers album at Pete Seeger's version of the tune pretty much. But as I got deeper into the music of the old time world and banjos and fiddles and stuff, I discovered these older sounding banjos that had a much more mellow and different sound. And uh, well, I'll let you hear it for yourself. This is a banjo that was built for me by uh, John Bolin up in Washington State, but it's pretty much a good representation of what a banjo might have looked like in the mid-1800s, and uh, <coughs> sounded like this. Thank you. 
and the pepper and you might have recognized the second one is Polly put the kettle on. We, a lot of us sang that when, uh, when we were very young and a lot of these tunes did indeed come from the old time traditions and the Appalachian music that I was raised with. But the banjo has a very long and, and ancient history going into many different countries and while a lot of people are very aware of the African roots of the banjo, <coughs> excuse me, Few are aware of its roots in the Asian countries, uh, particularly in China, and places like that where the Chinese banjos could go back as much as 4,000 years BC. Um, but we haven't just looked at much of that over the years. But I did get a chance to play with a, another musician for about a year who had learned music in China and brought some of these Chinese tunes over and it discovered that they fit perfectly well on the old banjos or the new banjos in the tuning that I'm using. It's a double C style tuning. This is down into G because of the pitch of the strings. But playing in what I play the claw hammer style, it's an old stroke style of playing. And with an unmodified instrument, unmodified stroke, I was able to learn and play some of these Chinese tunes. And the Chinese tunes, unlike the uh, American dance tunes, the United States Appalachian dance tunes tend to be dance tunes, the Chinese tunes more tell a story. They paint a picture in music. And the picture of the tune I'm going to play for you, it's called Thunder on a Dry Day, is depicting a time as a very long drought has come to an end in China, uh, the type of drought where food doesn't grow, where plants just don't grow, everything is turned to sort of desert, and people are hungry because there isn't enough food. So this tune depicts the sound of the oncoming storm to break the drought in the distance, and if you listen, you can hear the rain coming, the thunder starting, and the people rejoicing. So thunder on a dry day. for you. 
<coughs> oh, see, it was always a, a music exercise for me over the years, but so were songs. The old songs, the English songs that came over, <coughs> the Irish and the Appalachian music kind of blended. Everything created a sound. And I was very lucky, I think, to be raised in a family that had music. My dad called square dances, but he also listened to everything from old time music to country to bagpipes and classical. And my mom, she sang in the temple choir and she had folk group. They had people come over and play and she played some piano. And, and so I got, I got indoctrinated in a very, very early age. And my mom told me a story before she passed away about me wanting to hear a song. She said, I was asking for a song. I wanted to hear Tunnel. Now I was probably about two and a half, able to sort of speak a little bit, but uh, not make my thoughts necessarily clear. And it was bedtime and I asked for Tunnel and mom had no idea what song I wanted to hear. So she did what moms do. She made up songs. And, you know, she sang about the, 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 the tunnels, the Squirrel Hill Tunnel, which we lived near uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She sang about the bus in the tunnel. She sang, I think she sang about some John Henry things because of the Big Rock Tunnel, and they weren't anything anywhere close to what I wanted to hear. So I did what any tired, self-respecting two-and-a-half-year-old would do not wanting to go to bed but being quite tired and ready for bed I kind of threw a fit and screamed and cried and she told me that night she felt like she was kind of the worst mom on the face of the earth and I'm thinking as I'm listening to the story isn't it nice to know you got even with mom at least once in your life but uh, she didn't, didn't last very long a couple weeks later we were over at Eileen Goodman's house and uh, Eileen starts singing and I start singing and jumping around singing tunnel, tunnel, tunnel as she sings and the fox is on the town -o. Now I know we're in a virtual situation and you're watching this on a screen but you feel free to sing along. Maybe even better for you because no one's listening to you sing along. And uh, as loud as you can, drown me out if you want, but this is a song that many of us knew. I won't tell you the name, but you're going to know it in a minute. Now the fox went out on the chase one night, prayed for the moon to give him light. He had many a mile to go that night, far reach that town o town o town o he had many a mile to go that night, far reach the town o Now he ran and he ran till he came to a pen there, where the ducks and the geese they're in. He said, a couple of you are going to grease my chin before I leave this town o town o town o So he grabbed the great goose by the neck and he slung a duck right across his back. He didn't mind that quack, 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 legs all dangling down, oh, down, oh, down, oh. He didn't mind a quack, 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 or the legs all dangling down. Well, old mother flipper flopper jumped out of bed. She ran to the wind and she cocked her head. She cried, chon, chon, the great goose is gone and the fox is on the town, oh, town, oh, town, oh. She cried, chon, chon, the great goose is gone and the now Johnny ran to the top of the hill. He blowed his horn, both loud and shrill. Fox said that it'd be for my kill, soon be on my trail. So the fox he ran till he came to 
to his den. There was little as eight, nine, ten. They said, you better go back again. It must be my time. Town, oh, town, oh, town, oh. They said, you better go back again. It must be my fine town, oh. Now this next verse kind of scares some people. We worry with teachers because for those of you who know next what's coming, especially vegetarians, you may want to cover your ears and your eyes. Cause the fox and his wife without any strife, they cut up that goose with a carbon knife. They ain't never had to suffer in their life, and little ones chewed on bones, oh, bones, oh, bones, oh. They never had to suffer in their life, little ones chewed on the bones. So I'm going to switch here to a more traditional sounding banjo to most of you with the metal strings. You can hear a little bit brighter twangier sound a lot of the developments of the banjo were for that purpose. This is tuned to the sort of, again, a standard tuning of G tuning. Some of the old timers actually used resonator banjos, but we kind of They've fallen out of favor with the old time crowd these days. So I like the open back sound. It's a little more woody, a little more open. But a couple of the old players that I had the opportunity to listen to, though I've never met them, were um, folks like Fred Cockerham and uh, um, uh, Wade Ward. <coughs> Spent a lot of time listening to their recordings and some things about them. And they have very different sound to their playing compared to how we sort of think about playing today and through some research and, and collaborations and work with uh, banjo, another great banjo player, Bob Carlin, who is still alive and playing, um, I got to explore a little more in depth some of the playing. Now, I don't seem to have that ability to just copy somebody else's playing exactly. It's never been my thing. But I like to think that the music I'm playing that we are playing today has a tie to the history. It's old time. It ties to the old time. So I'm going to do a couple pieces here that might rem be reminiscent of the styling of, uh, in this case, Fred Cockerham. His uh, Train 45, he called it Train 45, and sometimes it's called Reuben's Train or just Reuben. And you may have heard a folk song that came from it, uh, 900 Miles from My Home. So here it is. <laughs>
us that kind of more earthy, modally sound. And um, another tune that that I got from the playing of Wade Ward is going to sort of do some of that same thing. It's these these tunes that we transferred or we made a little more uh, pretty. In old time music, it's not really pretty. I think sometimes that's what they mean. It can be well played, but it's not pretty. So. Uh, a lot of you may have remembered the tune Old Joe Clark, and uh, it comes to me from the playing of Wade Ward. Again, the banjo's tuned to G. And you'll start to get some more of that backside rhythm, that other just sound that just, it just speaks to you at one point, you trying to incorporate it. So here we go, a little bit of Old Joe Clark. <laughs> I've said a little earlier that uh, at one time in my life I played violin. <coughs> That's right. Started about age yeah, almost nine years old and played through grade school and high school and the orchestras. And by the time I was done with high school, I'd had enough of that violin nonsense and kind of put the instrument away. And it wasn't until mm, maybe. Uh, uh, 15 years later <coughs> when I was already sort of playing the banjo some already and I rediscovered the violin as a fiddle and uh, I got a whole new interest in the instrument and a whole new vision of it. For instance, a lot of the old timers tended to retune their instrument from the standard we know GDAE low to high, but they'd retune and uh, one of the most fascinating tunings to me is one called Calico. I don't play that many tunes in it, but it was based on the key of A, and the instrument is tuned A, E, A, C sharp. And one of my favorite old fiddlers, <coughs> I always ask who your favorite old fiddlers are, uh, dead fiddlers, you know, the guys that, uh, and, the, and the gals that inspired you that we can't hear anymore, but we have recordings, and one of my favorites has been Ed Haley. And Ed Haley had a lot of music that he was responsible for uh, saving, keeping alive, and uh, thanks to people like Bruce Green and John Hartford, that music is still available to us today. Well, one of his tunes that I really love is an old version he called uh, Lost Indian. We call it Ed Haley's Lost Indian because it was his variant of a tune. doesn't sound much like the other versions of the tune, which also have other names. So, tuned like this... <laughs> So your C sharp is a unison tune. So I'm going to play it for you now. A little bit of Ed Haley's Lost Indian. And uh, you know after that we're going to get, get Emmy to come back and play and sing a little bit with us some more. But uh, here's Ed Haley's Lost Indian.
Lost India. Now, Tucson has all these people that come and go from the town, whether they come in the winter to escape the snow, the snowbirds, or they leave in the summer to escape the heat. I call them the sunbirds. They uh, all used to be referred to once upon a time as hobos. And the hobos would travel all over the country, take their tools with them and work and hop the trains and come and go. And, and you know, they'd come where it was warm and weather suited their clothes better in the winter and where it was cooler and the weather suited their clothes better in the summer. <laughs> so we continue the tradition, but there was a song years ago called the Milwaukee Blues about one particular old hobo, old Bill Jones, trying to get his way out of Dodge to get down to the warm parts of the world. It's called the Milwaukee Blues. Is how I get it from Charlie Poole. She's a pretty darn good fiddler, too. And one of the things we really enjoy doing is playing double fiddle in the old-time way. And uh, we're going to get our fiddles. These two, two are tuned to that A tuning I talked about earlier, A-E-A-E. -E -E. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to play a couple of old-time tunes that aren't really that old. Old-time music isn't about how old it is all the time. It's about the style and the feel of the music and people are still writing these tunes. So two of our favorites are The Meadow Prancer, which is written by uh, our friend Rick Kaiser back in Pennsylvania. 
and then um, the road to Malvern which was a, a, a Jim Childers tune and these two fellas are still out there putting out more music than we could ever learn in our lifetimes I think sometimes and uh, they sound like this <laughs> Loose hair. I know, the older I get, the more I lose. You think? Yeah. Well, let's do it this way then. How about that? We're going to do the old knee to knee thing here. Ready? Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Small space, big Situa position. <laughs> Situational. Yeah. Logistics. It's logistics. here and do a, a couple more of our favorite dance tunes and the reason I say that differently is for most of the dancing the tunes have to be pretty even a a b b eight 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 but those last two that we played they weren't quite that even they're just a little crooked a little extra hitch here or there so, yeah, you, you play that when you're right, upset with the collar <coughs> or the dancers <laughs> but that doesn't often happen so we save those tunes for when we're playing something like this and we like these tunes. 
from when we're playing a dance. This is the blackbird says to the crow, which comes from the playing of uh, originally from Cooch Bertram, but we got it from Andrew Porter out of the DC area. He added his little twist and we kind of kept that going. And then the cuckoo's nest. Now the cuckoo's nest is a pretty old tune and way back when there's a version of it called quail is a pretty bird and I sort of get my version of it from a combination of John Hartford's playing and his source which is another one of those Ed Haley tunes and it's just a little different than you're used to hearing it but it's like the way we like to play it and the way we're going to play it <laughs> right now for these people so you ready there? Uh, I think I am. some of the contests now and then. Hmm. It's a good one for the old time world, but it's also a good time, good one for the contest world. But we're not going to play a contest beat. We're just going to play it for our own enjoyment and yours. So, Texas Gals. It does have words, but we never usually sing them. It goes, 
I went hunting with my pals. We went hunting them Texas gals. Woo hoo, woo hoo. And that's kind of it. <laughs> if you're down in Texas, you understand the woo hoo part, you know? <laughs> Texas gals, y'all. <laughs> Okay. Key of G, so it should be a whole lot easier on your hands. A little bit, yeah. And a little bit of McMitchin's reel. Clayton McMitchin was one of the fiddlers for the skill liquors. <coughs> Played, oh, that was an interesting sound. I like that. Whole new instrument has been discovered. <laughs> 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 we just have too much fun, you know. Uh, we do miss being able to see y'all in person, and uh, we are thankful for this chance to perform virtually though it may be and we hope you're enjoying the music most of your musician friends have kind of lost all their outlets for the music and we're working on new ones but this is a pretty good one and I think we have to thank this the uh, yeah. Southwest Folklife Association and the organization that puts together Tucson Meet Yourself for not giving up for persevering and making sure we get a chance to spread Tucson's music to all of you out there maybe even a little wider than it used to be we are going to miss the food, though. Yeah. We are going to miss the food. The, the food trucks, um, you know. <sighs> what else could I say? Let's do a little bit of McMitchin's reel, sometimes called the hawk trough reel. That's hog is in McMitchin's pig. <coughs> Key G. Not too fast now. Not too slow. Kind of half slow. <coughs> Thank you. 
actually get to keep the guitar for, well, let's skip that one. Okay. Let's skip, skip just go right to Sandy Boys. I'll switch fiddles here. Okay. We, we've decided to uh, amend the show. A little different. We don't want to run too long. And you've got that guitar there, and it's working out so well. We have actually just two more pieces for you today. This is one of my favorite and longtime favorite tunes. It's uh, um, from the playing of Eden Hammonds, who was a West Virginia fiddler. It's called The Sandy Boys. And I kind of like to play it in the way that Eden played it. And old time music, everybody likes to change different things and do it their own way a lot of times. And I like to do it the old way if I can, but I'm still going to put my own things into it. And, that guitar part is just going to add so much to the old Sandy Boys. do one more piece. I want to thank probably our favorite. Oh, turn around now. <laughs> our favorite thing is, is playing together in the key A. <clears throat> These tunes really rock. And uh, so we're going to close out today again with a big thank you to everyone who was involved in making this happening and it happened to you for being here and tuning in to see these performances by ourselves and so many of the other performers. Again, I'm Dan Levinson and my partner Emmy Chuck and Miller here. If you want to learn how to play these instruments, I do teach. Or if you just want to write and give a comment, clawdan1 at gmail would be my email address. Feel free to write me. Give me a yell. Clawdan.com is my website. And uh, maybe we'll see you in person in a not too distant future. So we'll close out here with a tune called The Boatman which was a, <clears throat> a Daniel Emmett tune. Daniel Emmett lived around the Cincinnati area on the Ohio River, and uh, not too far from where I was raised, actually about four hours downstream so from Pittsburgh. And then the Hangman's Reel, which is a, originally a French-Canadian tune, but we play the U.S. variant. So thanks again, and hope you're enjoying the music, and we'll see you down the road. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>